Hello, and welcome to Making Sense of Social Media. My name is Lori Clausen, a 13-year veteran social media marketing specialist, and I'm thrilled to be talking about content marketing with you for small business owners and entrepreneurs. Now, here at my agency, my company, Clausen Marketing, we keep it very real, very authentic, which is why I've decided to uh, keep my background um, from being blurred out. I just thought, you know, us small business owners, us people that work from home, this is what we live with. And I don't ever want to be considered to be fake or phony, which if you know me at all, or if you've seen me on social media at all, you know that I, I'm pretty real. Yes. And today um, I'm super excited to welcome a special guest. His name is Kyle. He will introduce himself to you as well. But Kyle is someone that I met through... Um, a program that I'm participating in now for uh, it's for social media marketing agency owners. And uh, yeah, he's really, really awesome. So I can't wait to share some of his insights with you about content marketing. And hopefully you'll benefit from some of the things we talk about. Welcome, Kyle. I'm so pleased to have you here today interviewing on making sense of social media podcast. Introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit a little bit about yourself and um, yeah, why, why you're here today. Cause I'm super excited Certainly. to chat with you. You bet. I'm excited too. Thank you very much for having me on your podcast. Um, yeah. So a little bit about myself. My name is obviously Kyle, Kyle Hamilton. I operate Burr agency based in Fernie, British Columbia. Um, we are a small boutique agency that is servicing independent hotels and resorts. Uh, a little bit of, about myself, um, I started out my kind of quote unquote professional career working in hospitality, working in um, oh, at a backcountry cool. lodge um, here in Fernie. It's actually it's actually how I ended up in this mountain ski town. Wow. Um, well, would... and for those watching, listening, Fernie, BC, there's barely a place more beautiful than that. So that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, no, it's it. Uh, I, I can launch into a little anecdote that uh, I'm sure some of your listeners <laughs> would love, but, um, you know, my, my background, I moved here, I was working in hospitality, this remote backcountry cat skiing lodge, um, cool. it was gorgeous, yeah. worked my way up from, from kind of dishwasher housekeeper to, I was just at one point managing two hotel properties at the ski hill, Wow. um, hit a point where I was trying to build a career as a photographer as well video and content creator. Oh, and right um, it got to the point where I was working 40, 50 hours a day or a week being a hotel yeah. manager, as well as being a content creator photographer. And my wife and I kind of sat down and was like, okay, hey, one of these things has to give. And yeah. she, she said, well, if you drop photography for four or five years, to focus on hospitality and it doesn't work out are you gonna be able to get back into the content creation side of things i was like well technology is going to advance everything's going to change it's going to be tough right. she's like what about yeah. the other way you focus on photography and in three or four years it doesn't work out are you gonna be able to get back into the hospitality space and i said well i'm probably not going to go back in and step into a a manager kind of gender, general manager type role but i'm certainly going to be able to find a job and go from there so totally with, with that kind of perspective she's like well chase your dream go become a professional photographer and oh you have I, a good wife <laughs> i know she's the best um and so yeah i did that for 10 years i spent my summers working as kind of niched into wedding photography um oh, okay. became well established as a wedding photographer and i would spend my winters um traveling around to cat skiing and heli skiing operations creating content for these operators um, for their social media and marketing and um, basically awesome. kind of got to a stage after a decade of doing that you know I had a young daughter at home uh, mm. my wife had a few health issues and just be being away all the travel didn't make sense anymore so I got back in and I, I kind of leveraged um, that experience had a had a neighbor ask to uh, asked if I had any desk space in my studio photo studio at the time and Oh, okay. uh, one thing led to another we started this marketing agency together wow uh, I kind of focused on the social media content creation side he was more on the, the design and agency management side of things and right. that was the uh, genesis of Burr and here we are now 
That's amazing. I love how you organically like grew into content marketing and just like had so many different experiences with it along the way. So yeah. that's, that's super exciting. That What a great story. My goodness. That's awesome. So I'm just going to dive into a couple questions here for you, yeah. Kyle. So uh, what are the main goals and challenges of creating and distributing content on social media platforms? Like what would you say goals first and then challenges? So, I mean, my goal is an agency supporting clients with their social media and their content creation is a getting people to kind of get over themselves and, and stop being so shy about putting themselves out there. You know, everybody and I do the same thing with my agency. Um, so kudos to you, Lori, for actually doing the podcast, <laughs> this podcast and uh, getting you. yourself out there. You know, mm -hmm. that that is probably the biggest barrier I find working with small businesses uh, and medium. I mean, any size business, really. Um, but, you know, as as entrepreneurs, a lot of people they don't want to be front and center. They don't want to be in the limelight. Yeah. So, you know, getting out there, doing it, um, making sure that you're being consistent. You know, it doesn't work if you post five photos or five videos on Monday and then it's like three or four weeks later and you're like, oh, I haven't posted anything in a while. I better <laughs> post post something. And you, you either post a whole bunch of or you post once and... I'm just squirming thinking about it because there's literally nothing worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, like getting up, making sure you're creating content, making sure you're regularly sharing content. Um, mm. And then third, not stressing about the quality of the content. You know, Ooh, a lot good. of people really, really get hung up on, well, it's not a Hollywood cinematic video. It's just me with my iPhone. It's like, that's fine. Or, yeah. you know, that's all you need at this stage. Um, yes. Start creating content, just start <clears throat> doing it. Start, start creating a variety of different content and start seeing what your audience is responding to and then start yes. tailoring your content a bit more to that. And, you know, as you become more experienced, as you start getting more results, that's when you can then start elevating the quality of the content, you know, if you're not trying to do just like spray and pray, throw everything on the wall and see what sticks. Um, <laughs> That's good. What, once, once you start kind of figuring out, okay, this is, this is the direction I want to go. That's when you can then start being a little bit more considerate and conscious about, you know, do I, do I need to buy a new camera? Um, do I need to buy different audio gear? Um, do okay. I need to hire a, a copywriter or, or, or even maybe it's just an editor to review everything that you're you're posting um and, and getting out there so i think those would be my three main things but i mean right. we could sit here and chat for the rest oh, of the afternoon about uh, all the different <laughs> aspects to it <clears throat> yeah absolutely you've made some excellent points there i'm sure people are going to get a lot out of that um so let's move on to the next question how do you measure the effect effectiveness and impact of social media content uh, what are the key metrics and maybe tools that you use um to be perfectly blunt and honest and open i don't use a whole lot of tools um right. and i don't usually use a whole lot of metrics apart from some vanity metrics okay. of, you know how many likes did it get how many shares yeah. did it get um I so you don't I dive a little bit deeper into where the likes and or shares or comment or I mean, or I, yeah, come like, from, I do or... sort of look at all of that for, for, right. for clients that we manage their social media, you know, um, that like, I, I'm always cautioning clients to really be careful about what metrics they're tracking. Yes, um, that's because huge. like, you know, vanity metrics are real and vanity metrics are, um, suck people in and for, for your readers who aren't necessarily cognizant or understand what a vanity metric is it's you know don't get sucked in by likes don't get sucked in by follower counts um when you, when, <laughs> when you start looking at you know where are my likes coming from where where are my followers coming mm. from if you're a business in iowa who's focusing on i don't know i i'm going to probably sound really ignorant here being a Canadian and not, not from Iowa, but <laughs> corn farmers. Um, mm. If you're, if all of your likes and followers are people in Southeast Asia, um, they're probably not your audience. So, you know, yes. you can get 10,000 likes or 10,000 followers 
from somewhere else in the world. I mean, they, they might be Canadians even. Um, yeah. But if they're not your target audience, they don't really matter. So what we, exactly. what, what we as an agency are always working with clients to focus on and to think about it is think about your campaigns, think about your content holistically and um, think about how th all the different ways that you can use your content. So, you know, when we, when we talk to some, uh, a hotel and it's, you know, we're, we're saying like, you know, you need to start creating regular content. We don't want that content solely to live on your Facebook page, on your Instagram page, your TikTok, whatever, whatever it's going to be. Um, we want you to dedicate some time to create quality content and then we're going to put it into a blog post. We're going to put it on your oh. YouTube channel. We're going to share it in your email newsletter. And we're going to make wow. sure that there's a call to action associated with it, that that is what we track. And so, you know, oh, we're okay. we're a little bit less tracking about the specific post. Um, right. I mean, holistically, we're looking, we're going to be looking at the metrics in the back end and be like, okay, of course. where is the traffic to your booking widget coming from is it coming from right. social media is it coming from your email newsletter is it coming from this and then we're going to look at right. on kind of a, a monthly or quarterly basis what type of content is driving most of that traffic so that we can then double down on that um i love that so it's a super holistic sort of yeah functionality to exactly to the exactly like what, one provide. thing that we that we really <laughs> stress to clients is you know you're investing a lot of time and energy into creating content. Mm -hmm. Why are you limiting how you share it to just Ooh. social media? That um, is such a great key right there. Yeah. And, and like for me personally, one thing, one story that I share with a lot of clients and I'll share it here now, um, you don't control your social media. It doesn't matter how much you yes. think you do, how like oh my when stars, I was a wedding yes. photographer, I had a buddy in Calgary who he had like 10,000 followers on his Facebook page. Um, you know, wow. he would post a photo, he'd get a thousand <laughs> likes. Um, life was great. Facebook went and changed their algorithm. Yeah. Suddenly his page, his post that he was get put putting on his on his wedding photography page, they might be getting a hundred likes. So he, like Ooh. instantly he lost almost 90% of his engagement through through facebook right. so um you know content marketing and creating this content like that's really why we stress hard to clients don't just focus on social media because you don't control that message you control right. you control your website and mm -hmm. you control your email newsletter those are the only two channels that you really control and yeah. so to put all your eggs into a TikTok basket into an Instagram basket into a, a LinkedIn basket, whatever it might be. Um, somebody can just come in and change, change a couple pieces of code and overnight, suddenly none of your followers are actually seeing what yes, you're putting out there. Exactly. I love all, I love everything you've talked about so far, Kyle. And I just love that it's relevant to not only like medium and larger size corporations and medium sized business, but for small business owners too. And like solopreneurs, like yeah. so many of us are out there. So no, that you're giving fantastic, fantastic uh, tidbits here. So yeah, that's awesome. I love content marketing. I, I mean, I've been at it myself for oh, thirty. Well, almost 15 years, I'm going to say. So, yeah. but anyways, yeah, let's talk more about you. Um, <laughs> what are some of the best practices and tips for creating engaging and relevant content for your target audience? I know you talked about your target audience already. So what yeah. are some of the things you do to get them talking? I, I think the, the most important thing there is actually knowing who your target audience is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's one thing to say, like to, to create a psychographic profile and, you know, think you can, you, you can pick them out of a lineup kind of thing, but to really right. understand what that means from their perspective, like really putting yourself into your audience's shoes um, and creating content that is going to resonate with them and that, more than resonate, like that's going to have an emotional impact for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's so much, I see so much content being created that, you know, is essentially being created for the sake of creating content. 
that there's no there's no value to it like I, I i or i personally struggle to see the value and i'll yes. be the first to admit maybe that content isn't being targeted to me but i'm still getting paid you're still paying me for the ad or the, mm -hmm. the the paid sponsored placement for me to see it so um you know really thinking long and hard about who you're creating the content for and why you're creating this content for them um totally it's I mean, that's, that is, I think, the biggest thing. Um, the other really important thing that a lot of small business owners that I talk to, I think, struggle with is separating their mindset of good content versus the audience's mindset of what is good content. Like, um, or maybe what they think is being expected of them. Is that kind of what you mean? Or? Well, no, I, I, not necessarily what is being expected of them. Um, like the okay. direction I was going with this is, you know, Sorry. behind <laughs> the scene. No, that's fine. Um, you know, behind the scenes type content, you know, what, as, as a business owner, uh, you know, we, we work, we work with a, a chocolatier, like someone who creates okay. chocolate bars yeah. and, cool. you know, just, what goes on into making a, a chocolate bar like you know doing video little videos little little photos of the production and the assembly of that as yeah. the business owner that's the stuff that you just you wake up in the morning you're like oh not another day on the production line kind of thing oh, but yeah. your audience they're like that eats it up is they really love cool it cool stuff like i want to know yeah. more tell me more um and so being open to to listening to your audience of, you know, what are they asking for? What, and even, even asking your audience, what type of content do you want to see? Um, yes. That can be a really valuable insight that you can get with almost no effort. Yeah, absolutely. That's excellent. I know one thing I often tell, uh, cause I do a lot of teaching for small business owners on how to use social media to market themselves. One thing I often say is, here's what you feel like saying, and here's what your audience is really looking for. And it's yeah. only when you find that sweet spot right in the middle that your content really starts to yeah. explode and, and do really well, perform well. So, um, but yeah, yeah no, and that, that kind of comes advice. back to the, that mindset of or that, that understanding of who your actual target audience is and what they 100%. want. Um, it's, you know, it's one thing to look at them demographically, but it's another thing to look at them on an emotional basis basis yeah. and understand that side totally. of it. Totally. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. All right. Next question for you, Kyle. You're doing so great. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you balance the quality and quantity of social media content? So how often do you post and what are your, well, this might be a bit of a stretch, but what are your optimal times and formats for each um, platform let's just go with like quality and quantity yeah so i mean in the quality versus quantity realm that's again highly dependent on the business we're working with i mean mm. if you look at my social media i am a bit of the pot calling the kettle black here because i think mm -hmm. the last time i posted on my facebook page was probably eight months ago oh. um, <laughs> And whether the quality is up there with the quality I know I can produce, probably not. <laughs> yeah. um, it's the, Kyle, that old, you're not alone. Trust <laughs> it's me. That, it's that old chestnut <laughs> of the, the doctor's child is the last to get seen. The carpenter's house is yeah. the last to get renovated. Exactly. Um, yeah. But this is, this is where the, for me, working with clients, this is where the fun happens is, you know, mm. creating a bunch of content, seeing what sticks. And like I was saying earlier, you know, you, you kind of got to do a lot of trial and error when you start out and, you know, figure yes. out what type of content people is, re are re is resonating with people, which, you know, is, are they wanting more photos, more videos? Is it audio? Is it copywriting? Um, you know, right. you, you start out doing a whole bunch of different things, start seeing where you're getting more and more traction, what is resonating more. And then you can start fine tuning it. And it's when you start fine tuning it that you can then start really, investing a bit more time and energy into raising the level of the quality um right you know when it comes to social media um i think that's a one where there is a bit more of a quality over quantity um mm -hmm. value but having said that 
I'm always the first to say like, stop just adding to the noise. Um, if, you know, if, if you're only producing content for the sake or posting to social media for the sake of posting to social media, stop, like sa save your time, save your breath, save your energy mm -hmm. and focus on doing something else better. Um, mm -hmm. But again, like each client has got different outcomes or different desires and different goals. So totally. one of the things that we always do with every client um, when we when we first onboard with them is actually is sitting down and doing a strategy session, doing understanding what their business goals are, what their what their life goals are, you know, what right. what That's does so success for them actually look like or mean. Um mm -hmm. Yeah. So once we, who, who's, who is their target audience really, really starting to figure that out because that's where we can then use our ex expertise um, to help guide you to avoid creating a whole bunch of useless content and focus your time and energy into some more valuable content. Right. Well, for anybody hearing this, maybe for the first time, if you're not creating consistent content, it's not the end of the world. You're not the only one, um, you know, having a plan and and a structure and, and working to get that, you know, functional for your life, your lifestyle is really, really important. So great, great advice, Kyle. One, one thing, right. if, if I can, oh, one, no, thing I, one thing I would add to that, yeah. um, like if if you are struggling with consistency, if you are struggling with quality or, or quantity, um, I'm going to say 95% plus of small business owners that we, that I sit down and talk to um, their biggest hassle, hassle is not the right word, but their, their biggest <laughs> challenge is like that, that consistency, that, that creating the, the, the content on a regular basis and, when I ask them what their plan is or what what their strategy is for creating content, it it invariably is, oh, I'm walking around and I realize, oh, I need to create, I need to post something today, or I need to, yeah. I should be taking a photo of this. What I found personally, like back when I was a photographer and trying to create content and that as things have grown and progressed and evolved, really sitting down, like dedicating four hours a month you know, the first, mm. like just schedule it the first Monday of the month, block it off and spend three or four hours. And all you're doing is creating content, you know, in it. Yeah. It takes me personally an hour to sit down and write one post. Uh, right. cause you know, I got to get into the mindset. I got to think about what I'm going to say. I got to think about what the photo is going to be or the video clip's going to be. But if I sit down and I spend two hours, I can get like, 10 posts written or and organized and photos attached and then schedule Ready that. To, yeah. I can sit down for three hours, four hours, and I can do a whole month content calendar, use a scheduling tool, um, post schedule Hootsuite later, what, whatever that tool that you want to use is. Mm -hmm. And boom, you've got 30 days worth of social media posts and content created, scheduled. That way, Thursday night at 11 o'clock when you're finally shutting down <laughs> from work and falling asleep you don't sit bolt yeah. up right in bed and go oh I forgot to post uh, something today. <laughs> totally it's kind of like a muscle hey like the more you use it the easier bet, it, yeah. it yeah. becomes and yeah, yeah I find that just, too. yeah it's one of those habits that you just start yeah. doing and yeah, totally. all of a sudden it becomes natural mm -hmm. I love that such great advice um, all right, we have one more question for you. And this is so, I love this question. So how do you leverage the power of storytelling and emotion in your social media content? And I know you've touched on that already a little bit, but just maybe go about the storytelling aspect of it in your experience and in, in your you know expertise. Yeah, the storytelling is such an underrated um, aspect to content creation and content marketing. Um, the big, the biggest thing I think everybody can really stop and, and think about before they start trying to create content and try like, how are they, how are you going to incorporate a story into your content marketing is think about why you're in your business. Think about mm -hmm. why you're doing what you're doing. I heard, I, I should have written down where I read it or who who said it, but 
this quote it always comes back to me is people don't buy what you sell they buy why you're selling it and right. you know understanding why you're doing what you're doing is going to help you weave that story a lot better into the narrative of your content strategy right absolutely and i love that stories do sell stories tell stories sell and it's you know i think back to marketing 100 years ago or advertising as it would have been referred to it was just like buy my stuff because i said so you know the billboard yeah. marketing and and it's it's shifted so dramatically and I love it though. Like it's such a human to human thing and it doesn't matter the size of your business or if you're a large corporation, it's still one human interacting and transacting with another human. You bet. And that's where stories are just such a huge part of it. And I, you know, I hope that through, you know, sharing of our stories and putting this podcast out there that People will, you know, understand that their stories matter, even if they're super scared to tell them, the more vulnerable and even transparent you make yourself and allow yourself to be with your audience, honestly, the more success is possible because people who stand behind, you know, walls and behind closed doors, that's really never going to lead anywhere. So yeah, stories are huge. So, huge, so, huge. so huge. Yeah. And, you know, if I can add, add, like coming back to that idea of vanity metrics, you know, yeah. you don't need 10,000 people online clicking yeah. on a post or, or whatever, whatever they do online, sharing, sharing your story. Yeah. If you can find 10 people that, can, that oh. you can resonate and connect with of, of yes. why you're doing what you're selling, whatever the more impactful your story is for them, the more they're going to tell 10 of their friends. And then those 10 friends, if if your service or product is delivering the value that you're, pro you're proposing and, and say it is, they're going to tell 10 friends. And suddenly the, the storyline of your content isn't about you, but it's, it's what you deliver. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I love that so much. So amazing. Kyle, you've been such a great guest. I am so grateful that you spent some time with me today. Now, remind everybody watching or listening where they can um, reach you or find you. And I'll definitely put everything in the descriptions and show notes and all the things. So I'm pretty definitely. new to podcasting. So I'm going to have to, you know, really learn the verbiage and all the stuff. Yeah. But... <laughs> well, you can, you can find me personally at I am Kyle Hamilton on pretty much all the channels. I am K-Y-L-E-H-A-M-I-L-T-O-N nice. um, or Burr Agency is We Are Burr uh, on all the channels. W-E-A-R-E-B-I-R-R. B-I-R-R. -R. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, Kyle. You've been absolutely fantastic. And yeah, it, feel free if you're, you know, either in Fernie or the Br greater British Columbia area tourism or, you know, I'm sure Kyle would be happy to chat to to you for, you know, I'm Whatever. happy to chat with anyone about anything yeah. at any time. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah, I no can thanks. vouch for Kyle. He's he's an awesome dude. So I'm I'm super stoked that you spent uh that you you've been my first podcast interview and I'm so excited. Well, I, I really <laughs> if you couldn't tell. The honor. Yeah. It's it's yeah. been an honor to you to be part of your your uh, journey and, and to be the first awesome. in this journey yeah. for you. I, I'm really excited <laughs> and wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Kyle. Awesome. Well, I don't know how I'm gonna say signing off, but Signing off for now. <laughs> Anything super specific in, in mind. <laughs> what is your cat's name? That that is going um, in the podcast. That, that one is Freddie. Okay. We've, we've got two cats there named Freddie Mercury and Ziggy Stardust. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. <laughs> I love it.